In this video, we're gonna talk about all things Coinbase, from why they went public via direct listing, how much money they've made, and their growth potential, and no video would be complete without talking about the potential headwinds and competition Coinbase may face in the future. I'll end the video with my thoughts and whether or not I'm going to be a long-term Coinbase investor. It feels like cryptocurrency and traditional Wall Street have been occupying two different planets. But with today's Coinbase IPO, the two worlds are coming together. Coinbase has sort of become the face of crypto and definitely has a first mover's advantage. Coinbase started in 2012 with the radical idea that anyone, anywhere should be able to easily and securely send and receive Bitcoin. Since then, they've built a trusted platform for accessing Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies by reducing the complexity of the industry through a simple and intuitive user experience. I've been using Coinbase for many years and one thing I will say is that the user experience is second to none. If you haven't seen my video on how to use Coinbase to easily buy cryptocurrency, I will link it below and you should also see a banner above. Today, the Coinbase platform enables approximately 43 million retail users, 7,000 institutions, and it enables 115,000 ecosystem partners in over 100 countries to participate in the crypto economy. Coinbase's mission is simple. They want to create an open financial system for the world. Coinbase's IPO is definitely the most highly anticipated public offering of 2021. My order for Coinbase stock got accepted at $391 a share shortly after it started trading. Then it went above $400 for a bit and then it sort of took a nosedive. I sold my position at around $360 a share and re-entered at $333 a share. At the time of me making this video, Coinbase is trading at around $331, giving it a market cap of approximately $65 billion. But is that value justified? We'll definitely talk about that and more over the course of this video. If you are new to the channel, welcome to the Beat of Business. My name is Ravi Wadden, and I've worked in institutional investing for over 10 years. I started this channel to talk about all things investing, from personal finance tips, investing ideas, emerging technologies, and current events that impact the business world. So if you could do me a quick favor and smash that like button and hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. I plan on continuing to make valuable content like this well into the future. Unlike going the traditional IPO route or going the SPAC route, Coinbase is going public via direct listing. One of the reasons that Coinbase is able to go public via direct listing is because it doesn't need to raise money because Coinbase is already a cash engine. For your knowledge, other notable companies that took a direct listing approach are Spotify in 2018, Slack in 2019, and Palantir in 2020. It seems like this is the first time in a long time that a prominent company hasn't gone public via SPAC. This year alone, there have been 389 IPOs and 298 of those have gone public via SPAC, aka Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Simply put, in a direct listing, the company isn't issuing any new shares or raising any extra capital in its debut. In a direct listing, you forego an underwriter, usually an investment bank like Goldman Sachs, and you forego the typical roadshow. In an IPO roadshow, a company is trying to drum up buyers and raise capital for shares at an IPO price that is established by the investment bank underwriting the deal. Instead, the company, in this case Coinbase, is bypassing the whole process and is opening up their shares directly to the public. Unlike so many companies that are going public and trading on projections that are three to five years out, Coinbase is already extremely profitable. In the first quarter of 2021, Coinbase not only grew at a rapid rate, it also generated strong profits at the same time. If we compare metrics from Q4 2020 to metrics from Q1 2021, the growth over one quarter is truly unbelievable. In Q1, Coinbase had 6.1 million monthly transacting users, up from 2.8 million at the end of 2020. In Q1, Coinbase had 223 billion assets on the platform, and that was up from 90.3 billion at the end of 2020. In Q1, Coinbase had $335 billion worth of trading volume, which was up from $193.1 billion at the end of 2020. In Q1, they had revenue of $1.8 billion, up from $585.1 million in Q4 of 2020. And in Q1, Coinbase's net income was approximately $730 million to $800 million, up from $178.8 million in Q4. And in Q1, Coinbase had an adjusted EBITDA of approximately $1.1 billion, up from $287.7 million in Q4 of 2020. Crypto has the potential to be as revolutionary and widely adopted as the internet. 
And as of right now, Coinbase is the default starting place for a new user who is looking to journey into the crypto economy. And Coinbase expects the crypto economy to expand into the mainstream and touch every individual and business around the world in the coming decades. Simply put, Coinbase grows as the crypto economy grows, and they have a tremendous opportunity to actively drive their business by doing the following things. The first thing they need to do is continue adding customers. And the second thing they need to do is expand the depth and breadth of their digital assets. And the third thing they need to do is launch innovative products well into the future. Let's elaborate on this a bit more. Coinbase sees anyone with a smartphone as a potential retail customer. And currently the number of human beings on earth with a smartphone is approximately 3.5 billion people. Along with retail customers, they need to continue to increase their institutional client base as well. From the end of 2019 to the end of 2020, the number of institutional clients using Coinbase grew 67% from 4,200 to 7,000. Other ways they can grow their customer base is by increasing the amount of payment methods that are accepted and continue to grow internationally. Currently, Coinbase serves customers in 100 different countries, but over 99% of their total revenue comes from just the United States and Europe. The next thing they can do is expand the depth and breadth of their assets. In 2012, Coinbase started by enabling customers to buy and sell one crypto asset, Bitcoin. Today, Coinbase enables customers to invest in over 45 crypto assets and store over 90 crypto assets. But in order to continue their growth trajectory, they need to continually increase these numbers. The third major opportunity for Coinbase comes from launching innovative products. According to Coinbase, any known and yet to be created financial product can be built for the crypto economy. Coinbase has already done a bit of this by letting retail users earn rewards on their holdings, but I think more can and should be done going into the future. This means innovating to provide customers with more opportunities to engage with crypto assets. One way to launch innovative products would be through partnerships like the one they have already established with Visa. With the success of this partnership, they should definitely look for other ways to form additional partnerships so that customers are more likely to engage in crypto-based financial transactions. Just like any other business on the planet, Coinbase has a variety of risk factors and threats that they have to take into account. The first risk factor is the highly volatile nature of crypto. Coinbase's total revenue is substantially dependent on the price of crypto assets and the volume of transactions conducted on their platform. If prices or volumes decline, Coinbase's financial condition would be adversely affected. Another threat to Coinbase is that the majority of their revenue comes from transactions in Bitcoin and Ethereum. In 2020, 56% of trading volume on Coinbase was driven by the purchase, sale, and trading of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Additionally, according to the company's filings, about 96% of the company's revenue comes from transaction fees. So if the spreads that they rely on to make money come down or if the industry fees reduce, this could be a substantial threat. If demand for these crypto assets declines and is not replaced by new demand, Coinbase will be adversely impacted. Perhaps the biggest potential risk to Coinbase is security. If for some reason the platform is hit by a cyber attack or a security breach of some sort, there is no question that it would adversely impact the business, both in terms of financial loss and a hit to the reputation of the brand. It could also result in Coinbase going offline and being unavailable for a period of time. And this could result in significant regulatory scrutiny and it would generally reduce customer confidence in the company as a whole. Other risks that Coinbase could face include regulatory or legislative changes, increased competition from other payment services or crypto assets, negative publicity and events relating to the crypto economy, changes to the level of interest rates and inflation, and changes to the monetary policies of governments in the form of trade restrictions. I think Coinbase has some serious, serious growth potential, and that's why I'm going to be a long-term shareholder. Let me explain. A big part of investing is trying to anticipate consumer trends and consumer habits. It's funny because I was just recently having a conversation with somebody about this. When I try to anticipate consumer trends and habits, I always try to look at what young people in high school and college are doing. And if you know anyone in the 16 to 22 age range, the crypto markets, digital banking, and things like NFTs are completely accepted and considered normal. No offense to my older viewers, but the only folks that are skeptical about the adoption of cryptocurrency and the growth of platforms like Coinbase are typically the older generations. For me, the sense of normalcy from our younger generations is the biggest gauge or indicator in terms of where the world is heading. But let's talk about Coinbase's valuation. 
Now let's take a look at this slide I prepared that compares the market cap of Coinbase versus other companies in the financial sector. I gathered the market caps of some of the big banks and the market caps of two exchanges to provide more context. Intercontinental Exchange is the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange for those of you wondering. And as you can see, Coinbase has a market cap that is lower than all of them. But Coinbase not only offers financial products like a bank, it is also an exchange like the CME Group. So when you consider the trajectory at which crypto is being adopted, the potential for Coinbase to grow exponentially over the next decade is there. Now there are many other factors to consider, but for the sake of time and all things considered, I'm going to be a Coinbase shareholder for a long time. With that, I'm going to call it a video. I hope you all found this video informative and helpful both in terms of what Coinbase does and in terms of whether or not you should consider adding it to your portfolio. I hope you all learned something new today. I'll see you all next time.